Hello and welcome. I am here with Gail Porter. Um, we want to kill the stigma. Everybody knows that I do the most to kill mental health stigmas. And with it being World Mental Health Day, I am actually sitting here with someone who inspires me incredibly. I'm here with Gail Porter and I just want to say what an honour it is to be able to interview Don't you. Don't make me start already. Come on now. And just, it's not and an honour. It's an honour that you're is. here in no. the wee flat. Seriously, like I have been like getting a recap on kind of what you've been doing more recently because I think like a lot of people, we all so we all would have known you previously as the presenter, like I said, um, who had her beautiful bottom on the Houses of Parliament, and also um, a lot of people commonly know that you have alopecia. Did and you, you uh, did you notice? I, oh do you man, know what? I did it so <laughs> but, well. But I think it is something that like people would, and you were so bold in in talking about it and stuff, and just really empowering other women. I want to talk a little bit about your journey, um, mm -hmm. and first of all, you know, talking about the FHM. Mm -hmm. Thing. I found out recently that you didn't actually know that was happening. Nope. What, what, how did that come about? Well, obviously I've done the shoot and I was told it was going to be kind of, you know, a little shoot and there was champagne involved <laughs> and then, <laughs> you know, nothing could fit because I had quite big boobs and I was really short and I think we sort of planned the whole yeah. stylist thing. Oh, nothing fits. Get nothing a bit fits. tipsy. Get a bit Have tipsy. Have a drink, love. Chill out. And then, um, <laughs> yeah, and I was like, oh, okay. And then he said, oh, maybe you just do a quick picture of you lying down, just your bottom. And I thought, well, that's not offensive. And yeah. it's not going to be seen by anybody, really. So, yeah, I'll do that. And then he went, just stand up and just do that and we'll just see your bottom and no one's going to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going to see it. And then, um, yeah, I did it, got home. I remember phoning uh, my mum and just saying, yeah, I said, I, you know, I, just did, I did the picture yeah. and it was my bottom. And, but I said, you know, it's like a page 70 or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Um, so I'm not that bothered, but I'm starting to get a little bit anxious because I still suffer from anxiety because I always think I'm doing everything really great. But um, because I su suffer from bipolar as well and, and I, I get... I get really excited about yeah. things and then suddenly I panic about them All afterwards. of a sudden it feels like yeah. the worst idea. It feels like the worst thing you've ever yeah. done and you need to... You start throw... planning everything bad that's going to happen now. Yeah, yeah, and it's all just going <laughs> to... Yeah, I was going, yeah, I've had a great day. It's brilliant, wonderful. Oh my God, it's nice. I had my makeup done. I had my hair done. And then I was like, yeah. And then suddenly when you get out and you're like... What have I done? I'm sure it's fine. It'll be fine. Yeah. Will it be fine? I don't know. And so you've got like endless questions in your head, and that's what you know. That's why I don't sleep as well because I constantly ask myself, "Have you done right? Have you done enough? Have yeah. you done this?" So anyway, yeah. And then um, I was in a flat. I was in um, just off Kilburn Way. Yeah. And um, I put on the news. I went to the bathroom, and it's like blah blah blah. Gail Porter, da da da. And I was like, BBC One News. I no. I'm never on the new. What have I done? Oh my god! Crazy. So my head's going. Go and I went through and I saw this image on Big Ben, and I was like, "What was your first thought? First feeling? First thought was this is yeah someone I, who suffers with anxiety." I went straight to I had a was a DVD player, VHS, whatever, yeah. old school, <laughs> and I went. I think it was a VHS. Started recording it. I don't know. I thought someone was playing a prank. Okay. I thought someone had put a VHS and, and sort of doctored something. Oh, wow. So my ma mind was thinking, well, this obviously can't be true because that, this, this, yeah. that would be massive and that's insane. And you'd know. And then I went in and there was no tape in. I was like, oh, my God, okay. Um, and then I opened the, I went to my bedroom. So my bedroom looked out into the front, front, um, front street and there was just journalists outside and everything. And I was oh like, oh, my God, my this shit is real. God. And then the phone started ringing and... Um, yeah, so I think, I don't know if I, I think my mum rang me. Yeah. And then I kind rang my dad. Rang and the alarm. Yeah. We have done what? <laughs> you said nobody's going to see it. Yeah. And then I got a phone call from my friend David in America and he went, oh my God, man, I've just seen your arse on the television in America. And I was like, oh, it's in America as well. Oh, oh my like, oh. gosh. So then I just sort of thought, right, I'm going to have to, I had a job to do, so I had to get out. Walk past everybody, and everyone's sort of like high fiving me in the street, and I'm getting so so anxious. Yeah, yeah. And sort of like half crying, half laughing, and then I just went straight to FHM offices, and I went in to see the editor, and I hate you, everything. What? Yeah. And he oh, went, oh, it's gosh. flying off the shelves, and I went, I never got paid. It was a freebie job that for is a, crazy. a day, just for a laugh. That and is crazy, was, yeah, and they didn't yeah. even tell you. But you, you had an opportunity after that to then start sharing your perspective on things. Like, because yeah. your, your, your career must have gone... You know, I, I was thinking about it, and I was thinking, they, there's the... the I, everybody, everybody watching this knows that I'm kind, really passionate about trauma. 
yeah. um, and the way that trauma can manifest itself. Uh, undealt with trauma can manifest Have you gone itself. A lot of trauma? Yeah, I had had a really traumatic childhood, so I had. Um, I lost my mum to her in overdose when I was 15, and before that, there, you know, you can imagine the lifestyle that led up to that. And then, did um, you still have your dad? No, I never did. Oh, um, right. Yeah. So, and then. After that, eating disorders, my first boyfriend was violent and controlling and, you know, there was just so... So I knew, basically, that I Look was going to be weird, you know? You're not weird, you're perfect. But, but I also had this weird ability to put a lid on trauma and to just get on with things. And, and one of the things I noticed about you in, in the interview that I heard, but also some other stuff, is that you seem to be so empathetic to other people that you kind of downplay what you've been through. You always say things like, oh yeah, but, but you, you know, other, other bad things have gone, worse things have happened to other people. And at least I've got, you know, I've got my daughter, I'm really blessed. You, you really do see the good side in everything. I think I always turn a negative into a positive. You do, but then, I've noticed like, that. You, yeah, you say it, but I, I think it's the way I was brought up. Yeah. Very Scottish. So, um, always look on the bright side of oh, life. Yeah. Da -da 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 -da. Um, and we're very kind of like, you know, I don't know, it's we're very stoic. Yeah. So um, it's nothing is that bad. Even yeah. You can go home and cry. There was great times afterwards. Yeah, yeah, of course. Get, don't get me wrong. I didn't get loads of work out of it. I yeah. I probably lost more work. Because, really? Well, because I think I, I've I remember hearing about you a lot yeah, after but that. I was, I was to but maybe not work. Of, like, yeah. I was asked to go into lots of talk shows, which okay. I didn't get paid for. Yeah. I mean, nowadays I look back on it and I think, do you know what it was? I've had a I've had an up and down life, but I've yeah. been pretty lucky, and no one's no one's ever going to say that again. Yeah, yeah. Um, that arse has been on the house. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you <laughs> so know, there is there is so a... there is a positive. You know, I, I could sit and dwell on it and say that it caused a lot of my anxiety, but you know, I get anxious about everything. I yeah. get anxious about Sainsbury's. Yeah, and there's nothing to be anxious about. But I feel like if someone says to me, you know, oh, how are you doing? Yeah, and then I go, how are you doing? Can I help you? Do you want me to go and get something? Can yeah, I do something? that's just my nature. You're an empath. And it doesn't, yeah. yeah, but then. Last night I came home and I was, I don't know why I was so anxious. I had to get off the tube a couple of times. Because sometimes when it gets a bit busy. Yeah. And then I start to panic. And then I come off and I was just like, like breathe, it's all good. And I dropped my daughter off. She's gone to her dad's. And I always get a bit kind of weirded out. And I don't know, yesterday was a bad day. Yeah. And uh, today I woke up and I was okay. But I woke up about two o'clock and then I was having really weird dreams. My mum keeps coming in my dreams. You lost your mum, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, as yeah. Well. So I don't know why she keeps popping up at the moment. There must be something. The FHM thing was, you know, that's just tip yeah. of the iceberg. Basically, you <laughs> had been through a lot of a lot of other things, yeah. and and one of the one of the things that um, that yeah that that happened, which was almost overnight, wasn't it, with your your hair loss and, yeah. and realizing that you had alopecia. So four weeks it was. Yeah, so uh, my uh, hair was longer. Than, yeah, right length of yours. But lot much thicker. I've seen pictures. Yeah, you had loads of it. I had <laughs> loads of hair. I used to go into the hairdressers to get my hair blow dried because I just couldn't do it myself. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. Just too much. And I used to walk in and they were like, "You take her." No, you take her. <laughs> they were like, like, "I've no, got a sore gonna, arm. You yeah, take her." It's going to take at least an hour and a half just to straighten it and blow dry it because it was massive. And um, yeah, so I was in America again. I was doing the dead program, and um, I was with my ex partner and. He was just like, there's lots of hair in the bed. And he's looking at me when you've got a bald patch. And I was like, oh, okay. So I thought, right, don't panic. It'll be fine. And then I had a shower. And then the water was coming up to my ankles. Because of Your the, hair. the hair yeah, just yeah, yeah. blocked up the, the plug. And then I was thinking, okay, this will be, just don't panic. It'll be fine. Carried on working. And I couldn't brush my hair because it was coming out Didn't and out it. and out. And then it got to a stage, we were in a, we were in a graveyard in Las Vegas, as, as one does. So I think basically we just went to a graveyard to see how many American famous people were in a graveyard in Vegas. So anyway, um, we had a trailer thing and it was coming out in clumps and clumps. And I just said to the makeup lady, you, I, I look ridiculous. I just had a bit there, a bit here. And I was like, you're going to have to shave it off. So he filmed it and I was like, I'm going to lose my job because continuity has gone out the window but she had a scarf yeah so I just wore a scarf for the rest of this that series yeah so but um he filmed me getting it done he must have the video somewhere actually I must ask him yeah and um I just had to get it off because it was just that yeah, yeah yeah too much and so it was uh, that was really anxious timing so we had to film afterwards and I was wanting to cry the whole time yeah thinking oh my gosh I'm completely bald but then Everyone was like, oh, it looks really cool. And the makeup artist did loads of big makeup on. Yeah, yeah, We're yeah, all yeah. going clubbing in Vegas. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, I can't. I'm bald. And they went, anything goes in Vegas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they built my confidence up. And I was like, oh, my gosh. So we sat at this big table in this nightclub in Vegas. 
and I had huge lashes on. She'd done it all beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What all the colours? Yeah, everything. <laughs> and these girls came over like, oh my god, you're awesome. Are you? You're, you're awesome. <laughs> did you know? Have you been there? Oh my you god, you are like you life. Are, oh my god, <laughs> like serious. And they went, are you in a band? I was like, no. Yes. Yes, I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm in the Alopecians. I was really big in the UK. And I was just like laughing away. Like, oh, bless you. And I was like, that's Always great. wake, yeah. So yeah, they were like, oh my God, sit with us at the VIP table. We're like, cool, come on, everyone, quick. Free jump in, let's go. So um, yeah, so I kind but of like, I think because it was so quick. Yeah. I had no time to go over it. Yeah. It wasn't until I came back to the UK that all the negative press started. Yeah. It all followed me home and they were taking pictures of me and I was crying. And I don't know for what reason, well, they wanted the picture, didn't they? Did you have any support after that? Not really, because I'm Scottish. We do it ourselves. Yeah, and, you, and you're ourselves. busy. Do you know I'm what I mean? Busy. You're busy. And, and, and I get... And, uh, yeah, and I was more kind of like, I was getting phone calls left, right and centre. Will you come on this show? Will you come on that show? And it wasn't because they wanted to talk about, hey, she could be funny. She could be this. It's yeah. like, you're bold. Yeah. So that's your thing now. And, and yeah, let's just talk about... That's, because like, that's all I can talk about, apparently. With your... with your, <laughs> It's mad. With... Being crazy or um, having no hair. I don't... Yeah. So, yeah, let me nothing just... Nothing about music. Nothing about anything anymore. <laughs> crazy but, yeah. literally you also got sectioned yeah. in 2011 yeah I did. and um that was quite a while after finding out you had alopecia yeah yeah, yeah. and everything so, yeah. you you had spoken to someone about how you were feeling yeah they instead of finding some support called the police or panicking even, yeah yeah instead of or you just coming to sit with me yeah that's what I mean. Instead of if, in, a in a panic, yeah, you're... I'm in a, yeah I was in a, in a place where I was going to meet someone for lunch. I'd, I'd been on the hamster teeth and I started to panic. And then I made a couple of text messages and I was like, I'm really, I said, I'm not going to do anything stupid, but I'm really struggling. Like yeah. everything just seemed like I was in Alice in Wonderland, you know, when everything was a little bit technical yeah. and it all looked really yeah. odd. And I was like, right, okay, I'm panicking, I'm panicking. So I went up and I told him where I was going to be. And then I just assumed he would come up. Yeah, to and see instead, you. eight police officers turned up. To the restaurant you were at? Yeah. And that's it, took... Just, yeah. And so, well, it didn't help that I attacked one. Yeah, but come on, <laughs> come on. I if... thought I was like, I'm in Scottish Bruce Lee. No, but really? <laughs> <laughs> And I was just like, dish! But it, but... And then that was it, yeah. They were extremely forceful, and they were like, you're coming with us. And I said, look, I'm completely fine. I've calmed down. I was just having an episode. Uh, no, you're coming. They had a van outside. And I was like... Have you seen me? I'm, I'm not like the biggest person in the world, but I do have two second down black belts in martial arts. So. Yeah, so take time with me. And you see me, so I'm like that, don't even go there, mate. And then they were just like, no, we need you to come, we need you to come. And then, so I went, I went a bit nuts. Well, yeah. who I wouldn't? Was scared. Who wouldn't? I was scared. Literally, who and I was wouldn't? Thinking, where am I going? All I wanted to do was have someone sit down and talk to me. Yeah. And then the next thing, they take me to A and E, and they drop me off, and they put a policeman outside a room, and I was there for. 10, 12 hours sitting there. In a, no in, a, in a hospital? In a, a hospital. normal hospital? In, a, in an A&E ward. They oh just locked gosh. me in a room on my own. And then, yeah. You just, and I just sat so then there. And all then all the anxiety, like, everything, the yeah. overthinking. And then two doctors came in. One was a student doctor and another doctor. And they gave me a form. How are you feeling? I was just like, fuck you. <laughs> um, so they said, yeah, she's not well. So just um, lock her up for 28 days. And that was it. I, I was with these guys for like two minutes, if that. I've never met them before in my entire life. And they said, yeah, we'll section her. And I got put into section. Some of the people were extremely lovely. Some were a little bit dangerous. And we were all just locked in, given pyjamas and no counselling, no doctors, nothing. no nothing. And then I think a doctor saw me, I can't remember exactly how many days in, Yeah. but I think it was about 11, 12, 30, I don't know, it's about that time. Um, or maybe 80, I don't know, I can't remember, because by that point, the days were just like rolling into one another. And um, then a whole board of doctors came in, it was like apparently doctor day. Ugh. And so a whole bunch of them sat, and I had to sat in front of this panel, and they were in a circle, Oh, they just... And then they were asking me a few questions, writing things down, and they said, we're really sorry, you shouldn't be here, you can go now. By this point, I was being given medication, I was off my head. What was the medication for? The medication was to wake me up, to get me to sleep, to calm me down, to not make me anxious. I mean, I Sedatives. Wrote, I wrote a list, and then, yeah, and then there's uppers, downers. I was on about, I don't know, six, seven, eight tablets a day, and then they suddenly said, oh, you, you can go now. 
going into an establishment, if they could sit down with you for 20 minutes, they would have known exactly the, what's yeah. going on. No, you, and, and, and I, you know, you went in there for 28 days, completely left to your own devices, then to find out that oh, you shouldn't actually be here. Yeah, just like that. What do you feel could have been done in that 28 days that would have seen you leave feeling so much better? Just even seeing someone as opposed to just going in there and giving drugs. I think we were all in the same drugs. So it didn't matter what, what I mean, this place doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. It got shut down. Oh, um, and I, underst God. I understand that there's not enough money for mental health, you know, uh, nurses and all the rest of it. But I went to my local doctor recently. I was having a really bad time. And I don't know where it come from, but I was feeling, I, I, I was not coping well. So I went in and I said, look, um, and I was feeling ill and I was just really run down and really, really tearful. And I went up and I said, um, you know, I, I need to see someone today. I'm really, really not well. And he said, what are you doing three weeks on Thursday? What? Are you like, I, I don't know what I'm doing three weeks, but today so I, I need someone. From now till then. And I said, look, five minutes. I just need five minutes to sit down, talk to someone. And also I wasn't feeling well and I'd been coughing. It and, and Yeah, physically. And I just yeah. thought I'd need some antibiotics and, because I, I, I couldn't speak. And I was like, that's my job. And so obviously I'm just completely run down. Just yeah. five minutes just to speak to someone. And no, still to this day, they were like, no, you have to do like this three weeks on Thursday. I said, well, I'm working that day. I've got to go to Scotland. I've got to do this. And uh, no, sorry, can't help you. But um, yeah, I think if someone had spoken to me and yeah. someone had treated me like a human being, instead of, it, it, it did feel like one flew over the cuckoo's nest. We were all just put into a room. Yeah. There was what, a guy that ate his lunch off the floor because whatever that reason was, there was a woman that spoke to God down the toilet at 3 a.m. every morning in the room next to mine. There was a guy that would turn up naked in the front room and he'd forget to put his clothes on and we'd have to say, put your clothes on. Yeah. And so in one way, I was sort of sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, I'm actually getting worse and worse and worse. And then there was a thing, they said, right, we've got a day for you, you you're all going to have an activity. I was like, thank God for that. So they took us downstairs and they taught us how to do batik. Do you know what batik is? No. So batik is when you um, design t-shirts with hot wax. Okay. I'm a self-harmer. Well, I was a self-harmer and there was other self-harmers there. So as soon as the, the art teacher said, um, right, you can do a bit boutique, I'm just going to leave the room for half an hour and you get on with it. We're like that. <laughs> Everyone's burning themselves. There was no, there was no yeah. understanding yeah. of sort of different illnesses. Yeah. There was two guys that thought they were Jesus. So wow. they'd wrap themselves in towels and stuff and they were having arguments about who was Jesus and, and we were just left to our own devices. That is and there was nobody to talk to. I mean, yeah. I've, I've just finished writing a book about it. Yeah. Which, um, oh, I can't wait. I'll Sorry, give you I can't one. wait to I'll see give that. You Thank you, please. And, uh, <laughs> no, just, thank you, yeah. please. I'm thank writing, you, please. Thank I'm you. writing um, Are you? similar, yeah. Oh, cool. I'll, I'll read you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll well, dash you a couple of copies, 100, 100%. But um, also, yeah, I've just done a documentary for the BBC. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Oh, right, yeah. okay, I'll let you yeah. ask you. I'm going to ask you about that in a second. Okay. But, but yeah, no, I, I just needed someone to talk to. I needed someone to sit and... To love on you, To Yeah, or just one-on-one and say, where where is this? Yeah. Because I know that I can function... I know that I can do my job, but as soon as I got sections, my work just went. Yeah. She's like, she's bold, she's mad. And I think, I'm not mad, yeah. I've actually lost my hair, I've gone through I've lots of stuff, with that I've gone through trauma, yeah. I've watched my mum die, and now instead of someone just giving you a hug and saying, right, we need to yeah. talk to somebody, and um, they just go, we'll just lock her up for a bit. That is but mad. I mean, who decides on 28 days? I think I write this in the first chapter. Just two blokes in a pub or something. Just, yeah, well, 28 me... days, that will do it. Yeah. Because I've done everything I could to learn about mental health when I found out that I was, you know, struggling with a, what I thought was a behavioural disorder and then realising that a lot of the symptoms are similar to trauma. Yeah. Um, and with this PTSD and then the CPTSD, which, you know, is when you've had over and over different so what's things. That, what's that stand complex for? Post complex post-traumatic stress disorder. Because you said it earlier, I was going to ask you. And I was yeah, so I'm not a doctor and a labelling, and, and I know that yeah. you've, you've spoken to enough doctors, but from my experience, with even with somebody who doesn't feel that bad, but has witnessed or gone through traumati more than one traumatising thing, I would know, I know the kind of attention I need to give this person, because one, trauma's healable, and does, it's not very, very hard, yeah. just through conversation, through you know love and through different kinds of therapy. Um, not medication. Not ne no. medication isn't always needed, but it's, it's what happens. Some people do take it. Yeah, I've but, taken it before, as I oh say, no, definitely, but, but I don't take anything now. What I mean is, 
is before it gets to the point of needing medication. And it's not always going to happen. In, in, even now with everyone talking about mental health, it's not going to happen where something happens and people dive in to support you and then another thing happens and you're actually able to deal with it better because you've been supported. But with, you know, with me, I'm, I'm just using myself as an example and I've only known what mental health was, mental health issues were for two years. I would instantly know you know, the kind of direction to go um, in regards to just support and, like you said, just physical attention. Yeah. That's all. Get just it talking, off your chest. Get, yeah, get to, to the, each other. You know, and, and all you need, when, when I believe that when something tra traumatising or traumatic has happened, all you need is reassurance, comfort and attention in that in, in around that area you need to know it's not going to happen again you need to know you know there's all different kind of routes and also the comfort to stop you going over it and and with you know with you getting sectioned and having literally the opposite happen mm. i can imagine that a lot of the stuff that was going on in your mind probably felt worse even though they were like oh you can go you probably left like hold on i've just I was gone through angry this when yeah I came i've out. gone through this i've gone through that i'm fuming and i've just had to witness all that in that in that place um when, you know, it could have been dealt with in a I've in kept a in touch more. with, well, one in particular that was there, and he's, like, super, super... Hello. <laughs> Hello there. Just checking on her mum. Yeah. Um, he's super, super successful now. I mean, amazing. Yeah. Designer, wonderful. Yeah. He actually went in himself because he couldn't get the help. Yeah. And he just said, you know, someone's got to help me. And we all just sat in a room. You expect you're going to go in there and get extreme therapy yeah. and all the loving that you need. We've been put in there as yeah. if we're some sort of like absolute lunatics from something from American Horror Story yeah. or something. We're not. We're people that need attention. Yeah. We're not atten it is attention. It is. A, a level attention. Of or it's just like someone talking to us yeah. and saying, do you know what, we can talk you through this. You know, you could go to Harley Street or you could go to somewhere else and someone will sit sweet a bit. Then they go, and your time's up. And then again, that doesn't help your mental health because you just realise that you're you're not a person. Yeah. You're part of their yeah. cash. Yeah. So you're see you later. A, you're on a time. Um, on a positive note, though, yes. you have been doing... You went and the, there is... Um, there is a rehab, it's like a rehab, isn't yeah. it? Um, that the cabin group that's um, right. hold and it's called Rise. Well, that's the female, but yeah, Rise. I'm oh, okay, so uh, can you tell me so, a bit about it? Because okay. I've, I've looked it up, I know it's in Thailand. Yes, it's I in Thailand. I know it looks absolutely amazing. And from what I've read, it's like, the kind of the thing that I am um, kind of we should go existing. honestly literally I was thinking I should go there to write my book you should go get honestly because, because if you book. get yourself a cheap enough flight and it's you know if you go to any sort of clinic here in London yeah. it's going to cost you a fortune yeah. at any point because I remember when I was like really really unwell and then they sent me straight to the Priory and I remember just getting there in a taxi and I got out and the first thing they did was bring out a form and saying right it's x amount of thousand pounds a week Wow. And that was the first thing, not how are you, Before, what kind of thing. Yeah, letting you know, are you able to afford this? Yeah, and I couldn't, of course I couldn't. Yeah. So I just said, you need to get me a taxi back, and they went, right, fine. And they just sent me straight back. So this place, um, yeah, Rise, the cabin, yeah, I went there years it. and years ago when I was struggling, and um, I went out there, and oh my gosh, they deal with everything. They deal with. So, what, how long did you stay there for? What is it? Well, I, is it like a program? Or you can do whatever you, you want. There? You can stay oh, well. there. You can do a few weeks. You can do. It's totally up to you. They don't pressure you into staying for two. You know, yes. if you want to do a full program, you want to do eight weeks. You want to do six weeks. Whatever you want you. to do, it's totally up to you. Do they make is, like a tailored program around yeah. the amount of time you want to stay? Well, or they, can you just yeah. leave if you get? Yeah, well, I mean, you kind of, if you've booked your flights, you know yeah. that you're there for a yeah, certain yeah, amount yeah, of time. Yeah, yeah. So, you're um, pretty far away. Yeah, so I, I, went to, I went to it originally, and I was there for three or four weeks, I think. And it was amazing, just not because it's in Thailand, but because it's calm, and there's always somebody to talk to, and they've got everything from CBT to... Art therapy. Art therapy, yoga... You know, I, I think like um, doing exercise is really, really yeah. important. Obviously, they're very good with mental health. They yeah. they, they deal with trauma addiction. They as do well, trauma, they? mental health, trauma, um, alcohol, drugs. I mean, pretty everything. much everything. everything. But I mean, I'm, I'm going back. It, Are you? Yeah, just before I Christmas. Went. Just before Christmas. Yeah, I'm going to go. Let so see dates. if you want to come. Yeah, I would. I'm literally. definitely going to go back because, because I say I was only there for a couple of weeks to do a couple of days. Sorry, yeah. just to sort of to see see what it's like now. Yeah. So that I can come back been, and, and share so it's it. It's been going on for long. It's been going on for ages, but now it's sort of expanding yeah. and getting bigger. And so they just said, "Do you want to pop over?" So I didn't really get to chill out and yeah, do yeah, yeah, everything that I wanted to do and they do eating disorders they do yeah. absolutely everything you've got a, a documentary coming out the I, title is so creative 
<laughs> Gil Porter, mental health and me. I don't know how they came up with that. I was it's like, what's so that about then? I know. No, like, you know, it's straight to the point though, isn't it? No, exactly. And, and you don't want to have any like clever words because mental health is not as known as we think. No. So you could have all these special words that show what mental Keep health feels simple. like. But yeah. People Keep it simple. Tell us a little bit about that, and yeah, and so, it's January it comes out, isn't it? I think it's I think it's been moved to December now because okay. I think they're thinking about um, nice. letting people have that because there's going to be lots of help yeah, things yeah. on it before Christmas yeah, because yeah. Christmas is a quite a yep. dramatic time for a yep. lot of people. Oh wow, what a good idea! Yeah, I, I was quite I feel pleased really encouraged with that. Hearing that there's a, 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 a mindset like that. Behind yeah, things. I was so pleased when they phoned me because I yeah. spoke to the. the uh, the director of BBC from Scotland and he was like do you know what it's, it's a very powerful f f film and we know that you yeah. know I mean I Christmas I dread Christmas but because um, my daughter is, she always goes to her dad's because okay. they've got a huge family yeah 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 uh, my dad lives in Spain my mum has passed away yeah. and I don't have any grandparents so it's kind of me the cat and my daughter which is not that fun for a 17 year old <laughs> she's always like no it's cool I can come yeah. but I was like no go and just yeah, hang yeah. out with loads she got loads of cousins and that oh with my them. god there's like 20 of them sit oh, down wow. for you yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. more fun than hanging out with me and the cat watching Netflix <laughs> um, so yeah so it's going to come out for Christmas as, as far as I know and it's um, what we've done is we've gone I've, I've spent like three months with a, a lovely director and, um, and and the crew and we just went round sort of different hospitals oh, went wow. to meet people with different um, mental wow. health issues yeah and I got seen by different psychiatrists. And it was a lot about labelling. Wow. To find out, do you need a label? Yeah. You know, I, I think I got... Or does it just help people judge you? I, yeah, <laughs> well, I think some people like to have a label yeah. to, to know what's wrong. Whereas me, personally, I, I don't want a label. I'm yeah. quite happy just being Gail. No problem yeah. with that. Um, but then we went through, I think I was bipolar, then I was manically depressed, and I suffered from borderline personality disorder. Uh -huh. And so all, all these different people yeah. telling me all these different things. So you can understand how um, people do get confused yeah. and also probably don't want... And take the wrong medication. Wrong medication. So I dealt with people that don't take medication. I dealt with people that do take medication. I was given every diagnosis under the sun. But it was really interesting yeah. when they told their stories and everyone was really open, yeah. which was so lovely. Yeah. But there was one part when we went to... Um, there's this choir in Edinburgh so obviously I was at home as well. So that, was all of know, it in Edinburgh? Uh, no, we were in Edinburgh. We went, we were sort of all over the place. A lot yeah. in Glasgow, a lot in Edinburgh. But when I go back to Edinburgh, I always find it... I love Edinburgh because yeah. it's my home. Yeah, yeah. But I find it hard because obviously I can't... Yeah. See yeah. mum. But anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, yeah. But we went to this um, choir and... Um, they started singing, God, don't get me started, I always don't do this. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, seriously. But they all started singing and they were singing um, a Proclaimer song and everyone was singing it and there was a whole bunch of people from everything. Some people weren't depressed, some people were manically depressed, yeah. some people were just wanting friendship. And I was like, I'm not going to a choir, I can't even sing, what are you talking about? I can't draw, I can't sing, I'm useless at everything. Got up on the stage, I'm sorry for crying, but honestly, I'm crying happy tears. Yeah, don't be silly. Because don't when they started apologize. singing, when they started singing, I was like, this is what I love. And everyone was oh. hugging and a hot cup of tea and a biscuit and yeah, it was amazing. A lot of my friends said, Can, should we do a screening, we all sit together. Yeah, you have to. Because I've already seen bits of it, which I found really hard to watch because I don't like watching myself, but... My friend said we'd, we'd like to all sit together and maybe go to Scotland. That would be lovely. See all the kids and everything. Like that. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's something worth celebrating because what you're doing is, like I said, there's so many people that just haven't got a clue about mental health and that's why it gets untreated, yeah. un undealt with and overlooked. And that, that weird thing of, not that everyone does it mindfully, but of just pushing past things you know what I'm I've got I've got I've got children I've got a job to look after I don't need yeah, to worry yeah. about that that happened it's fine I'm over it and then you know oh it just gets worse and worse exactly. and worse because you're just pushing it under it's like that's when I went bankrupt it's like I exactly. just kept putting things under the under the bed going and that's the yeah. just do that yeah, gone yeah, literally there we go can't L see it so yeah, I'm fine literally oh who needs lights yeah got who candles. needs that who needs yeah. heat I'm Scottish it's fine let's go <laughs> literally I was going and then eventually you're just like oh my god I'm totally so up, hard as nails up up what's it creek but um yeah so that was horrible and then being homeless was not fun no so, all of it adds all of it adds to yeah it. but now i just work doubly i mean i worked really really hard but i think when i was sort of running out of um, money and stuff and also 
not getting the jobs because yeah. I didn't look right and I'd been sectioned and so work just wasn't coming in but the bills were coming in and you know looking at so my daughter had to go and stay yeah. she was staying with her dad and I couldn't and pay alone. for this and then I just remember like leaving my flat with like two bags and I thought oh my god this was about six six years ago and I was like I've got nowhere to go and I had nowhere to go <laughs> I how do you around. bounce back from that mentally just, oh it, well it took a while and then um, I got asked to do Big Brother, so I think they knew I was vulnerable at the time. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, they asked me to do that, and it, it was really bad pay. But really? I think because they knew I had nothing. So um, I thought, you know what, I'll get voted out in a week because oh, I'm going to bore people. <laughs> Three weeks later, I was like, come on now, vote <laughs> me out! <laughs> get me out of here! They were all <laughs> shouting at each other all the time. So it was America versus the UK. Mm. I remember Fat Man Scoop. Do you remember Fat Man yeah, Scoop? Yeah, 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 yeah. So he was my friend in the house. So uh, I used to, like, when I start to stress and getting anxious, imagine being in that house, um. like, having anxiety. Or they just argue, argue. And I used to go, um, would anyone like a cup of tea? And Fat Man Scoop used to go, man, Gil Port is putting the kettle on, you know the shit's going down. Because <laughs> that was my way of just like going, oh yeah, my god, yeah, they're yeah, all yeah, fighting, yeah. they're like, cup of tea, cup of anybody, tea, yeah. cup of tea, cup of tea. Does that actually work? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> just gave me something to do. A lot of people like, I know reach for tea though. Yeah, I don't know, I was just, I suddenly became very English. Cup of, cup of tea, yeah. And I was like, cup of tea, I didn't know what to do, they're all going, you even, and I was like, like tea. Tea, anyone? Anyone? <laughs> Tea, toast? Anyone want toast? We, we all know that people deal with things differently behind, behind the screens and yeah. stuff, but just even just being so, you know, out, out and open, talking about alopecia, you know, not wearing a wig and not, not that there's anything wrong with that, but just, just being so yourself and, 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 and trying not to care about what people think and stuff like that, which is just so, so out of this world. I don't think you even know the impact you have on people. Seriously, I just hope I make a difference. Yeah, because I think you are. Everyone though. goes you through really so are. much, and I haven't gone through that. You I mean, have <laughs> no. <laughs> stop this. Stop. I I'm, I'm really. heard, this is a phrase I hear you say too much. You've been through crazy amounts, and I'm not saying I don't want to make you, you know, dwell. I've cried already. Yeah, I don't want to make you dwell, that. but you are like that was ten you, minutes ago. You're literally Ooh. a superhero. I'm not even joking. And and oh, and the fact that you that. put the fact that you put your you know your eyes on everyone else rather than. You know, I think it's just amazing. So what advice would you give someone that doesn't have even holiday money to spend on the cabin group? Yeah. You know, what, would, what, what couple of tips would you give someone leading up to, to say to, to end this year on a higher note for them who struggle with their mental health, struggle with doctors and, and, and just life in general? What, would, what bits of advice would you give them to, to see them end this year on? Well, obviously I know that not everyone can afford to go yeah. abroad. Not yeah, everyone. I mean, exactly. you know, when I was homeless, I couldn't even afford to go to Edinburgh for my grandfather's funeral. See, couldn't oh. even afford that. So, um, and that was awful. Yeah. And I was just like, well, I can't get there. Yeah. I don't have a penny in my account. Um, so, um, on a positive note, you know that there's friends out there. Talk. You just have to talk to you each other. That a few times. And yeah, it's a big Come thing. On. And even if you like know someone that you see in the street, not not that often, but maybe if you see someone that. You'd sometimes think, oh, do you know what? Maybe I should just say hi and check yeah. she's okay or he's yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And then, do you want a hug? Yeah. And then, do you know what? The more you talk to people, like when I was homeless, I kind of like, I, I didn't know what to do. And then eventually I would speak to strangers and someone amazingly lent me a couple of hundred quid so I could stay in a bed and breakfast. Someone I'd yeah. only met a couple of times Aww. and I knew exactly where he went and I made sure, I was like, right, okay, at least I've got somewhere, I've got a roof over my head. And then as soon as I got a job, I went straight back to the place that he was and yeah. made sure he got the money back. So the thing, I was, I was embarrassed. I was really embarrassed, yeah. but it was warm and I wasn't staying outdoors. Yeah. So um, wow. just think that there are good people out there. Remember that, you know, and don't be ashamed to ask for help. Yeah. And even if it comes to like the cabin or a rise or something, I'm sure yeah. there's come some sort of way that you can, yeah. you know, it might not have to be there, but there's yeah. always someone to talk it's to. Like, they've got counselors that can talk to you. Yeah. And they've got people over here that can talk to you yeah. as well. Samaritans so do a line as well, Samaritans, don't they? I blink and love the Samaritans. Same. Oh my Same. God, they are just amazing. Because um, I mean, there was days I just thought, I don't know if I can carry on anymore. But I was so fortunate that I had my daughter. Yeah. Because if I didn't have my daughter, I'm not sure I'd still be here, to be yeah. honest with you. Um, she kept you going. Yeah, because you would never, I would yeah. never do that to my daughter. But if I hadn't had her, I'd... Yeah, there's yeah. been days when I thought, oh, I don't, 
there's no point. Yeah. I'm not really of any use to anybody. Oh. So, but yeah. I'm still here. Yes, you are. And, you're, you <laughs> and are I've got my little, so my little flat and I've got my little cat and I've got my 17 year old, whatever. And you know what, when, yeah. this, when this documentary comes out, yeah. I guarantee you're going to have to, I don't know if you're going to have to put a lock on your DMs because I think you're going to change so many lives. I, do you know what, I literally speak to everybody all night, every night on Twitter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was going to say. People are like, can you help gonna, me with this? Can you help me with this? Yeah, see, but you're like, changing lives and it's because you're so open and, and, you know, you're healing yourself and you're still yeah, able to heal to talk, others. Yeah. Kids, right, when you send me messages and say, how do I get my hair back? I'm not, I'm not being funny, I don't know. I'm so bold. <laughs> That's like the weirdest uh, thing I ever get. It's like, uh, how do you get your hair back? Yeah. If I knew that. <laughs> say, what picture of me? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Towards the end of this year, Gail's documentary will be out, so keep an eye out for it. And Love thank it. you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. I was going to say for having me. It's my house. Get out. And it's out. <laughs> <laughs>